think people kind of accepted me more because, okay, yeah, I was Latino, but New York had already seen, like, you know, the Fat Boys had a Latin rapper in it. And it was like, there's other Latinos doing it. I wasn't the only one doing it. So I think to an extent, if, 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 if you were to take folks that were used to living, uh, you know, in an environment where there are, you know, it, you know it's, it's um, African American, Hispanic, then you had people that understood where I was coming from and it wasn't like an issue. Now, if you had, you know, I guess there, there were other folks that weren't really used to the idea of maybe seeing somebody light skin doing this because it was, you know, just wasn't like the norm or it wasn't really something that you know, they wanted to see happen. And um, so I, I could get, you know, then that existed as well. But I don't really, I don't really feel that anybody ever really came to me face to face and kind of approached me. So I think it was just... in a show in Orlando? There was something that happened, but, but you know, here's the thing, man. I block out a lot of stuff too, man. So well, I'm I, here to remind you. Yeah, I know. Thanks. Uh, I, I mean, I only, even if you remind me, there's only so many things that I can like rem there remember. Was an incident with Nick, you know. Like well, there was a problem where people freaked out, and there was like this whole mob of people coming up to us, and you know, Nick ended after up the like. Show? After the show, I don't know what caused that. Now, you well, know. Was it a black club or a white club? Uh, yeah, it was predominantly, predominantly black. You know, and I don't. I was just doing my show, and and then like something happened to where everybody, you know, I don't know if it was me, I don't know if it was Nick, I don't know if it was somebody in my in my crew that maybe said something or did something weird or you know, I wasn't even. I can't remember, man. It's just like all I know is that all of a sudden we have like hundreds of people like rolling up to us, and you know, I mean, thankfully Nick did, you know. Nick did what Nick did, you know, Nick, he solved the problem without going into too many details. No, we need the details. What well, well he freaked out. I know he, he did his thing. He, he, uh, he's, you know, he's a tall guy, loud, you know, and he's like, he banged on my car and there was, there was a gun there somewhere, you know, I mean, nobody got it? shot or anything. But did he hold it right? He had it and it was present, and I guess nobody wanted to get shot, and that's you know. Yeah, pretty but much was it. he shaking? All right, everybody, come on, huh? Was he fumbling the gun? How was it? Come on. Yeah, it was something like that. It was kind yeah. of like a little bit of fumbling going on. Did he on. threaten anybody that he was gonna pistol whip them? I didn't know. I don't mm -hmm. remember that. That's his no. favorite thing. I'm gonna pistol whip you. <laughs> okay, so um, that's that's really interesting. Okay, cool. So, what are you doing nowadays? Well. After the Breezy Beat MC thing, I decided that I wanted to get more into a uh, diverse musical thing, so I started a band. And um, it uh, this band was kind of a mixture of hip-hop, rock, we had a DJ, we had an SP-1200 going with the drummer wearing headphones, and I, used to, I was playing bass. I would rap and sing, and then we had an electric guitarist, and you know, it was kind of like a, I don't know, pseudo Beastie Boys, Cypress Hill, type of thing, you know, Rage Against the Machine, when they were just first coming out. That lasted a little while, but didn't really go anywhere, so. I mean, it, we didn't keep it, I mean, I think Def Jam came to see us, and it, it, was, it was about to do well, but then politics came in, and the people that were gonna produce the project decided they were gonna step out and not have anything to do with the project anymore. So, that kind of left us in limbo. Uh, so I just, what did I do? I just decided to go into uh, doing other music, you know, cover music. I joined a, a band called Wesley, Wright, uh, Wesley B. Wright and the No Regrets and started doing a lot of cover music. I started learning uh, how to sing correctly. I learned music theory, you know, uh, how to play, uh, you know, you know, just by learning music theory alone, that kind of opened up my world, you know, to like guitar, bass, and all that stuff. You know? So where did that lead you to? I heard you got a movie deal with that, with a movie or something? Well. I had uh, I had come up with a couple of Latin tunes um, that I had stored away in, in my in a in a data disc. One day, uh, I don't know, it was already 10, 15 years that this thing was away. So I saw an ad somewhere where they needed a song. I needed to be a Puerto Rican type song, and uh, I just submitted the song and it got accepted. So it got you know it made its way to a movie called um, The Joy Nardone Story, uh, The Nail. And that was like my first placement in a, in a movie with one of my songs that uh, I had full ownership of and understood 
the dynamics of what ownership truly was, which is 200%, you know, 100% copyright, the other 100% publishing. That was, uh, what, four, maybe three, four years ago? 